Praise the Lord, everybody. Hope everyone's doing well. Seem to be having technical difficulties again uh, this morning, trying to uh, um, be seen by the people that I'm tagging in the videos, and doesn't seem to be happening. I guess we're working okay this time. Uh, hi, Mom. I see that uh, um, it's working this time, so I'm happy to to see that. And so we'll get started. I'm going to give it a minute or two for those who may have tried to sign on at noon and wasn't able to find me or get me. Hey, D. Yeah, I don't know what it is, but uh, having more and more difficulties signing on each week. But I'm here and it's working this time. Uh, so I guess I have to continue trying once or twice or thrice to get this thing to work well, to work right. Hey, uh, Judy, how are you? Just going to give it a, another minute for those who may have tried to uh, locate me here. And I can understand that you know, it's a Saturday, the weather's nice. Uh, a lot of times uh, things are, are, people have things to do and COVID restrictions are, are, are being lifted in places. And so people want to get out of the house and do things. So I understand that. I get it. But if you're not able to join live, please... Uh, um, ensure that you watch it at a later date. Hey, Al, good to see you, brother. And, um, you know, just share it. Feel free to share this with any and everybody you want to. I believe that the information that I place out here uh, is provided to me by the Holy Spirit, by God, and, and that uh, it's for his people to see. We need positive uh, spiritual messages these days, and we can't there's not too much that we can receive. We receive too much of other things out there. So, uh, like I said, I was going to give it another 30 seconds because of the difficulties I had uh, trying to sign on at noon. Well, I was able to sign on, but uh, no one else was able to find me. So, uh, we're going to begin. So, I guess I'll go ahead and get started right now, and I'll open with a word of prayer. So, uh, let us pray. Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you, Lord God. I love you. And uh, Lord God, we're here today. Thank you for this opportunity for us to have this fellowship, these instructions um, of your word, Father God, via Facebook Live. And, and I just pray, Father, that uh, those who are able to tune in, that they are also able to receive the message and apply it to their lives, Lord God. And I pray, Father God, that um, people will share the information. We share so many things that are not of you, Lord God. And I just pray, Lord God, that the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, move upon their hearts, that, Lord God, that the things of God become a priority in their lives, Lord God. Thank you. Uh, bless each and every person listening. Um, uh, continue to prosper them as the soul prosper, provide for them, and protect them, Lord. And, Father God, we ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. So, good to be here, everybody. I'm going to go ahead and get started so you all can go on by, with your day. I hope I leave a lasting impression with this word. I'm going to begin the way I began all the messages in this salvation series by saying that we are imperfect people living in a falling, fallen world. Uh, because of this, we need a savior. Uh, Jesus Christ is that savior. We all have sinned and deserve God's judgment. God, the deity, manifested himself as flesh, and we know him as the son, Jesus. To satisfy the judgment of those who believe in him, God planned his salvation through Jesus Christ alone. Jesus' instructions are to believe, repent, um, be baptized, and to receive the Holy Ghost to be saved from judgment and to spend eternity with God. And I previously uh, covered in the salvation series God's plan and also the topic on repentance and then last week was baptism. Uh, the fourth installment of this salvation series is on the Holy Ghost. And you may be asking yourself, well, the Holy Ghost, what is the Holy Ghost? It is, is, it, is it something spooky? Ooh, is it something like that? No. Uh, or could it be uh, dead people that can, uh, we can see through, you know, they're transparent? Or could it be disembodied souls that float through walls? Could the Holy Ghost be something like Casper, you know, that friendly ghost that we watched in Saturday morning cartoons as kids? Or could the Holy Ghost be something differently, something entirely differently? Um, so again, I asked the question, what is the Holy Ghost? 
The Holy Ghost is shown through scripture as the power by which believers are brought to faith in the Messiah. Without the Holy Ghost, you cannot obtain salvation. The Holy Ghost is God's presence among us. I read the following uh, post uh, from social media about a year or so ago. A friend of mine, uh, he's on here today, St. Clair Quincy Lee Sr. He shared this, this post with me. And the question was, do I need the Holy Ghost to go to heaven? And the reply was this, brother, you need the Holy Ghost to go to Walmart. You know, and th this was funny when I read it, but on a serious note, to live in this world and not be overtaken by the enemy, you need to obtain a certain power. This power comes from the Holy Ghost. In this message, I will tell you what and who the Holy Ghost is. I will also tell you why you need him. Most people view the Holy Ghost um, also called the Holy Spirit uh, as just that, a spirit. And they, they just see it as a spirit. And um, it's just FYI, throughout this message, the Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit will be uh, used interchangeably because they are one and the same. Okay, so, but what if I told you that the Holy Spirit is a person? That's right, a person, not a thing or nor an it, but a being. I am not saying that the Holy Spirit is is the human being or a human being, but the Holy Ghost is a person. What is the definition of a person? Let's look at that first. A person is a being that has certain attributes such as reason, morality, and consciousness. You know, I, I read in scriptures a, a lot where I would see that it refers to the Holy Spirit or God with a masculine pronoun such as he or him. Uh, to be considered a person, a human um, being, oh, no, no, let me rephrase that, just to be considered a person, not just saying just a human, to be considered a person, a being must also possess these uh, three characteristics, intelligence, a will, and also emotions. And the Holy Spirit, just as the human spirit, displays all three, intelligence, will, and emotions. Uh, and by the way, these are characteristics also make up our soul, mind, will, and emotions. Um, let me read this from 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10 through 11. I'm going to read a lot of scripture through here uh, because, you know, I'm giving you what God uh, says on the subject, not something that I conceived or believe in my head. I'm giving you what thus says the Lord. So in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10 through 11, but God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit, for the spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, same as the spirit of a man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man, but the spirit of God. And so what this is saying, bottom line, is that man knows the spirit of man, and the Holy Spirit knows the spirit of God. A mortal man without the Holy Spirit cannot know the things, cannot understand the things of God. So you need spirit to understand spirit. And so the Holy Spirit also has a will. What is a will? A will is the ability to make meaningful moral choices. So let me read from Romans 12 2, my favorite scripture in the whole Bible. It says, and be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So it's telling you the, uh, the perfect will of God. So God has a will and it is perfect. So the Holy Spirit also has emotions. An emotion um, is an affected state of consciousness in which joy, sorrow, fear, hate, or the like is experienced. In 1 John chapter 4 through um, chapter 4 verse 8, it says that he that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. So if you don't if you don't know love, if if you can't love people, then then you don't know God because God is love. That's one of the emotions. Because we read through scriptures where God is angered, where God is jealous, where God is loving. So God and the Holy Spirit, they have emotions. And when I say God and I say the Holy Spirit, when I say Jesus, I'm talking all the same. 
the spirit manifested in, in flesh, the spirit dwelling in us. And I'm going to cover more about that dwelling in us later on. Some may view the Holy Spirit uh, or may not. Uh, they may have trouble viewing the Holy Spirit as a person because of what scripture says and mentions about the Holy Spirit. When the scripture refers to the Holy Spirit as of a rushing mighty wind or says that the Holy Spirit is like as a fire, people have, uh, I guess, an issue or a trouble kind of relating that to a person. But however, we must balance scripture with the rest of scripture. Um, and we can't just go off just a... Um, a single scripture and what it says because in the new testament jesus is referred to or he referred himself as the bread of life but does that mean that jesus is a loaf of bread of course not in the same way that those scriptures that describe the holy spirit does not mean that he is just a force or a power only the holy spirit um is the comforter you know that was a promise um, from the Old Testament, and they didn't get to see that they did not have that that presence with them, that that power, that that promise. That promise was the the Holy Spirit that Jesus refers to as the Comforter. So the Holy Spirit is a Comforter that Christ said would come when He ascended into heaven. When that's what He told His disciples. I'm going to read in John chapter 14, verse 16 through 18. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter. Because Jesus comforted them while he was there. He instructed those disciples, those who followed him, and he comforted them and those who he encountered. But he said, another comforter, and this comforter is different. So let me continue with the reading of the scripture. It says that he may abide with you forever, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not neither knoweth him, but ye knoweth him, telling the disciples, but you know them, you know him, you know this comfort that I'm talking about, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. See, Jesus dwelt with them at that time, but he's saying that when the Spirit, the Holy Spirit returns, it will dwell in them. And it continues in verse 18, I will not leave you comfortless, I will come to you. And that was John chapter 14, verse 16 through 18. Let's look at John chapter 14, verse 26. But the comforter will, the comforter which is the Holy Ghost from the Father will send in my name, from whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. I tell people that all the time, and I, I use this verse where it says the Holy Ghost will bring things to your remembrance. And I'm, just, I'm talking about like scripture when you're reading the word of God. And I say to them that if you don't put the word of God in you, you know, we don't we don't think we retain everything. But subconsciously, we still have it in us and the Holy Spirit can bring it to our remembrance scriptures. There's been a time where I just spit out a scripture. I would repeat or say a scripture that. Um, I did not know I knew uh, verbatim, uh, but the Holy Spirit brought it to my remembrance. But if you don't put it in you, then you can't re it can't be brought to your remembrance because it was never in you. So, you know, get into your word. So uh, let me go to John chapter 15, verse 26. It says, but when the comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the spirit of truth which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. And then in John chapter 16, this is the final one. There are others, but I'm going to just conclude with this one, talking about the comforter. John chapter 16, verse 7 through 9. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment of sin because they believe not on me. There are some who think that the Holy Spirit did not even exist prior to Christ's ascension uh, to heaven. The, ho the Holy Spirit can be found in the Old Testament. So I'm just going to cover some of the scriptures and um, just elaborate a little bit on the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament. The Holy Spirit can be found in creation. Genesis 
uh, chapter 1, verse 2, And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. The Spirit, that Holy Spirit, for God is holy. The Holy Spirit gave life to humanity and to other creatures. And let me just say this. Some people may feel offended by calling them. You call somebody, hey, you little creature, you know, they might become offended because they might think of a creature as a little crawly thing or bug or something like that. But we are creatures. We are animals. Uh, but we're in the classification, uh, classification of a human being. Um, but yes, we are animals. We are creatures. So let me get back to the scripture. Psalms 104, verse 30. Thou sendest forth thy spirit. They are created. And thou renewest the face of the earth. The Holy Spirit strived with man. Genesis chapter 6, verse 3 says, And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh. Yet his days shall be an hundred and twenty years. So for it to not always strive, it has to originally strive with man. But, uh, you know, the Holy Spirit is not in every man because man is flesh. You have to invite the Holy Spirit in. You have to want the Holy Spirit to be a part of you. We were made to be inhabited. This body of ours, uh, we have the human spirit in us, but then we can also have uh, other spirits in us. And I say it like that, other spirits, because you can have legions of demonic spirits in you, but there is only one Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit and those demonic spirits cannot possess the same um, body, the same temple. Um, so you either have, you're going to have the human spirit, but you either have the Holy Spirit or demonic spirit or spirits. So you can, you can't have both. So let me get back again to the message. I get off topic a lot, but I think it's relevant. I think it's relevant. Okay. Let's say, uh, the Holy Ghost, uh, spoke through the prophets in the old Testament. Uh, the Holy Prophets were not just prophesying of their own thoughts, for the Holy Spirit guided them in their thoughts. So in 2 Samuel uh, chapter 23, verse 2, The Spirit of the Lord spake by me, and his word was in my tongue. And I say that sometimes. Sometimes when I'm uh, delivering a message, I am not on, I'm not going off my, my what I created, my, my notes. Sometimes I am speaking, and it's the Holy Spirit taking over. And, uh, and that's, a, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Always uh, allow the Holy Spirit to take precedence. Uh, but let's look again in Ezekiel chapter 2, verse 2. And the Spirit entered into me when he spake unto me and set me upon my feet, that I heard him that spake unto me. And... Like I say, if you want to be possessed, you want to be possessed by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit put his spirit in people. And I already talked about that. We were made to be inhabited. Uh, Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 27. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes or in my law, um, in, my, in my will. And it says, and ye shall keep my judgment and do them. When the Holy Spirit is placed upon you, you are able to do uh, great things. You are able to have powers. And I've read scriptures that talked about that. And I think there will be other powers. Uh, let me read this scripture and then maybe I'll continue after that. In, chapter, in Acts chapter 1, verse 6 through 9, it says this. When they therefore would come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power, but ye shall receive power. He said, You shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. So when the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you will have powers. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem, in all of Judea, in Samaria, in, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sights. And it's true. I'm, I'm going to testify. And when I do this, I am not boasting on Anthony Walker. I'm boasting on the Lord. When I say that the Holy Ghost 
uh, has empowered me and, uh, and uh, performed what we call miracles. With God, there are no miracles. It's just what God does. But to us, there are things that are miracles because normally we as humans cannot perform them. But just as Jesus Christ and just as uh, the disciples, the apostles who are followers of Christ, um, the Lord also bestowed upon me at times powers to, to heal. I've spoke about that in, in various messages, how God has, uh, through me, um, has healed uh, people with like uh, severe arthritis, fingers all crooked and twisted, um, people who with stage four, uh, a person, let me say, I say people, a person with stage four cancer, cancer a woman who, with paralysis, um, just all kind of different things that, um, uh, with with aches and pains and, and things and, and God uh, bestowed upon me the ability to be able to lay hands on them and to pray over them and they be made whole again. Uh, but like I say, it's, it's the Holy Spirit guidance and direction and not my own. And I learned that the hard way. Just go back and listen to some of my previous messages and you will hear um, parts or, or stories of, that I've told where the Holy Spirit has worked. So let me get back on topic again. After this, they returned to, you know, after the, um, what um, the Holy Spirit, when he gave them power and, and did all that. And the Lord told them that time um, when they was asking when would the kingdom be restored. After that, they returned to Jerusalem. About 120 went into an upper room, united all in. They were in one accord in prayer and supplications. And so now I'm going to talk about... Um, I'm going to begin talking about the Jews, the Israelites, uh, them re receiving the Holy Ghost. When I did my um, the message prior to this one on baptism, I went through the book of Acts and I talked about each uh, group or classification of groups, such as the Jews, the uh, Samaritans, the Gentiles, and the believers, those who were under John the Baptist's baptism. And because in the book of Acts is where all the conversions take place, those people who believed and they repented and then they were baptized in Jesus' name and they received the gift of the Holy Ghost. Um, that's part of the conversion that is talked about in the book of Acts, which are the actions of the apostles. And so in that book is where you find all the conversions talked about 13 um, that are straightforward and a couple that are not so much straightforward. But you will find them here in the book of Acts opposed to other parts in the uh, Bible. So the Jews received the gift of the Holy Ghost in Acts chapter 2, verse 1 through 5. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, uh, they were all in one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And and began to speak with other tongues. I'm going to, that's going to be my message for next week or the week after um, uh, about tongues. That's another controversial uh, subject. And um, I'm going to go in a lot of detail uh, about that. So uh, be sure to tune in then. So let me back up with this verse again, verse four. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And they were, and there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. And so when you receive the Holy Ghost, you become a new creation. Remember I said we are creatures and we are supposed to, uh, the creation is supposed to worship the Creator. And 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 it says therefore if any man be in christ he is a new creature old things are passed away behold all things are become new it was not only the israelites to receive the gift of and the power of the holy ghost this was offered to all who will accept it and so the samaritans received the gift of the holy ghost in the book of acts chapter 8 verse 15 through 18 it says this about that who, when they were come down, prayed for, for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then laid their hands, uh, their hands 
on them and they received the Holy Ghost. And when Simon saw that through laying of the apostles' hand, the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money. So this is somebody he thought that he, they could buy, buy the Holy Ghost and you can't buy it. Um, the, price, the price has already been paid by Jesus. You have to just accept it. You have to want it. Then you have to you live by it. So I'm going to talk more about that when they talk about the layings of hands. I'm going to talk about that when I talk about tongues because there are some people that think that there has to be laying of hands in that order for that to happen and that is not so. But there are a couple of instances uh, where they talk about laying of hands and then there are a couple of instances where there were no laying of hands and people were filled with the Holy Ghost. So the Gentiles also received the gift of the Holy Ghost. In Acts chapter 10, verse 44 through 46, it says, While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all of them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished because, you know, in, in the Old Testament, you had to be circumcised. That was a, a requirement. But uh, you, you don't you don't have to i mean for health reasons it's good to, to do that but anyway uh, as many as came with peter because that on the gentiles also was poured out the gift of the holy ghost and people were astonished because they thought only god's chosen people the jews the israelites were to receive the holy spirit but now we got the we had the samaritans and now we're looking at the gentiles who also were recipients of, recipients of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak, I'm continuing with verse 46, for they heard them speak with tongues and, and magnify God. Then answered Peter, and that's how the uh, that verse ends, 46 says, then answered Peter. So that was more to follow after that. Pick up your Bible and read it. Read Acts chapter 10, verse 44 through 46, and then read past 46 to see what Peter answered because uh, I don't have time to cover it all here. So I just want to say this. Now, this next group of people, the believers who were under John the Baptist's baptism, they also received the gift of the Holy Ghost. And so it says this in Acts chapter 19, verse 6. And when Paul had laid his hands, here's another example of someone laying their hands for them to receive the Holy Ghost. So when Paul laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them and they spake with tongues and prophesied. So now we see that uh, those who were under John the Baptist's baptism first, in my message last week on the baptism, I, I gave the example in the book of Acts where those under John baptism were rebaptized um, under, under the name Lord Jesus. So um, now we're looking at where they also receive the Holy Ghost. So let me ask you, let me state this, or I'm going to ask a question, then I'm going to give you the answer. What role does the Holy Spirit play in believers' life today, in modern day and time with you and me? Where, how does the Holy Spirit fit in? The Holy Ghost will give you power. I've already explained that. But let's read in Acts chapter 1, verse 8. It says, but ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and unto the othermost parts of the earth. And I read that previously, but here it is again just to support uh, that the Holy Ghost does give you power. The Holy Ghost speaks through his chosen. And I say that because in Acts chapter 1, verse 16, it says, men and brethren, this scripture must needs have been fulfilled, which the Holy Ghost by the mouth of David spake before concerning Judas, which was God, which was God to them that took Jesus. And so there were other scriptures that I was going to include with this, how God spoke through other people. Um, but I didn't want to take up a lot of time with it because it, it was getting kind of long. And I already gave you an example how sometimes when I'm, I'm ministering, the Holy Spirit will take over and will, and will speak through me. And he will do the same with you if you allow him to do so. The Holy Ghost dwells in you. Here's another example in Romans chapter 8, verse 11. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. So just as Jesus was uh, raised from the dead 
those who are that have the Holy Spirit that are possessed by the Holy Spirit will also be resurrected. So you got to have the Holy Spirit to be resurrected. The Holy Ghost is anointing. In 1 John chapter 2, verse 27, it says, But the anointing which ye have received in him abideth in you, and ye need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teaches you of all things and his and is truth, and is no lie, and even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. The truth is found through the Holy Ghost, through the Word of God, through God by himself. Sometimes we receive a revelation. Sometimes God just, just gives us a vision, a dream, or just give us a word. And then we will speak. It's the Holy Spirit speaking through us. Sometimes when I pray or I'm about to give a message, I ask, the, I ask God to speak to me, to speak through me, and at times speak for me. You know, it's just so his, his will, his message be communicated correctly. And so the Holy Ghost guides you in John chapter 16, verse 13. How be it when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth and what ye shall speak of himself. But what shall, I mean, sorry, whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak and he will show you things to come. Like I said, the Holy Spirit can can show you things to come that hasn't even happened yet. And I've, I've even had that happen at a point where I can say beforehand who would get baptized, who would get filled with the Holy Ghost, who would speak in tongues. And I had to prove that to a couple of people because I always would say that, hey, the Lord told me that this person is, is, would be saved today or this is what happened. So people weren't really believing because I was saying it after the fact. So I did something for a couple of people on two different occasions. I told them what was going to happen and who it was going to happen to beforehand. And it did. I'm talking about people who I didn't even know. And I told them that because I needed someone, I wanted someone rather, to believe me and to understand that I am not just saying things after the fact. I even told them before it, before it actually took place. <clears throat> so let me go on. The Holy Ghost uh, empowers you. In Micah 3 and 8, it says, But truly I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord and of judgment and of might to declare unto Jacob his transgressions and to Israel his sins. So I'm going to get ready to close. I'm going to leave with these important uh, parting words and scriptures. If you live by the Spirit, you must also walk in the Spirit. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 through 25. It says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ." possessive form here, have crucified the flesh with the affection and lust. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. So there's a flip side to that. When you are not walking in the spirit, you are fulfilling the fruit of the flesh. In Galatians chapter 5, uh, verse 19 through 21. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, uh, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, even hatred is a fruit of the flesh, variance, emulation, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envying, when you envy someone, that's a fruit of the flesh, murders. And you don't have to physically murder someone. You can murder them with your tongue by, you know, lying. Uh, drunkenness, drunkenness, revelings, and such a like, of which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. The Holy Spirit comes at a price of submission. He does not work in combination with the world. You cannot activate uh, his spirit in your life while being of this world. We're in this world. We're not of this world. You cannot activate his spirit in your life by partaking in its traditions, in the, the world's traditions, uh, by acting in your flesh. 
you must decide to grow in power uh, by rejecting the ways and patterns of this world. Do not let your enemy take advantage of you because engaging in that behavior reduces your power. The Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you, but you must listen to the Holy Spirit. You must trust the Holy Spirit. You must obey the Holy Spirit. He will prompt you to do some things and he will prompt you to not do some things. He will encourage you to help this person. He will um, encourage you to avoid another person. He will instruct you to respond and he will also instruct you not to respond to something. Uh, just know this, the Holy Spirit never goes against scripture. Never, ever, ever, ever goes against scripture. Therefore, it is very important that you read your Bible. Your Bible, you got to have a Bible. If you don't have one, go get one. It is vital, it is important. Because if you know the word, you will recognize more clearly if what you are hearing or what you're experiencing is from the Holy Spirit or if it's from something else. This is not something that you will become great uh, at overnight. It is something that you will work at and you will grow in. So I'm going to just leave you with a, I'm going to pray and I'm going to, then I'm going to close. Um, but I just ask that you listen to this, that you share it with other people, not just this, but the whole salvation series, um, because it's very important. We do not invest enough of our efforts in the afterlife and what's going to come after this short life is over. You know, we're living in the here and now for self. So if that's all you want, and you don't want eternity with God, then that's very sad. But if you want to invest in that, then you're going to have to do so. You're going to have to pray. You're going to have to get in your word. You're going to have to get in um, conversations that may be uncomfortable uh, so that you may know God and know who he is and allow the Holy Spirit in your life. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you, Lord God, for allowing us to have this time together. Thank you, Father God, for you being the center of our lives and for instructing us and guiding us, Lord God, and empowering us. I pray, Lord God, that everyone who has heard this message will be pricked in their hearts, that they will make a change for their life, Lord God, that they will follow the, the, your, your scriptures, your word on, on salvation and, and not think that just, hey, if I just believe or say I believe or just say I'm sorry that salvation is going to come, help them, Lord God, to understand the truth that your scriptures provide, Lord God. And I just want to thank you, Lord God, for who you are and how you are, Lord God, and what you have done in our lives, what you're doing right now at this very moment, and what you're going to do, Lord God. All the glory and the praise is for you, Lord God. In Jesus' name, I pray this prayer. Watch over your people, provide them, and protect them, and keep them. In Jesus' name, amen. You all be blessed. Um, always good to see you signed on here and look forward to uh, the next segment, the next installation of the Salvation Series, <clears throat> and it will be on tongues, tongues, a controversial uh, subject, but um, I'm going to brave it and, and present this message. Thank you all and God bless. Love you.